Hi, I'm Ed Sobey from Kids Invent. We'll be building a progression of cars. Each one is getting a little bit more technologically advanced, and now we make a big jump up to electric circuits. Kids today often don't have the opportunity to mess around with electricity. This is their opportunity to jump in, be comfortable with it, figure out what a complete circuit is, and uh, explore maybe even switches as well as reversing polarity. And it requires no introduction and, and no lecturing from you. The challenge is get an electric motor, a battery, some wires, and make an electric car. Here's a simple model. This one uses a propeller. Uh, a lot of teams will get started and they'll mount the motor directly onto the car body, in which case the propeller will hit the ground. Don't tell them that. Make them discover it on their own. Here what I've done is I've used the battery to raise the motor up as a motor mount in essence, so now the propeller can uh, turn cleanly. A couple things to be aware of with this model. One is that propeller has to be really on the motor shaft and you might want to go around and push it on very firmly because we don't want the propeller flying off and hitting someone. Secondly, you should admonish the kids that if that propeller's spinning and they put their finger in there, it's going to hurt. It could even cut them, probably not, but it certainly will hurt and uh, take time away from the, uh, the class time. The third issue is shorting the battery. If they have two wires attached to the two terminals of the battery, and if those wires touch, the battery will get hot. Your first indication is somebody will yell, my battery's hot. Uh, or my wires are hot, that will tell you to rush over and disconnect the battery. You might have to check to see if the battery has been uh, destroyed. Usually not if you catch it quickly enough. With those safety admonishments uh, aside, this is a wonderful activity. Kids will love it. Here we're not testing for how far the cars go. They will go forever and ever and ever if, if the car can go in a straight line. Here we want to measure speed. So with a stopwatch or with your smartphone or cell phone, you can measure the distance. Uh, and it doesn't really matter what that distance is. We typically use uh, 15 feet, 18 feet, something like that. As long as you're consistent, they put a car down to test, you start the stopwatch and you stop at the other end. They record that distance on the board along with the car name, and then they try to get the car to go faster. You can suggest to them, if the car goes in this direction, that it might go faster with the motor behind it. So some teams will immediately try to rip this off and position it, but of course that's not the right way to do it. The right way is just to switch the polarity on the battery or the motor so the motor spins the opposite direction. By letting them figure that out for themselves, they have now figured out everything they need to know about electricity, that the circuit has to be complete, and when you reverse the polarity, the electrons flow in the opposite direction. They've learned everything they need to know, and you haven't lectured one iota. They'll love this activity, they'll want to do it again, uh, they'll want to add a second motor and a second battery, that's up to you to uh, determine if they should do that. The first have to get one motor and one battery working and working well. And then they can go off and be more creative. And then at the end, if there's time, you can have all the cars racing. And at the very end, you can review with them what has happened, what, what the electric uh, circuit is all about. And you might even suggest to them that they can buy motors uh, at Radio Shack and other locations, or they can extract them from old broken toys and make their own cars at home. Wonderful activity. I know you'll enjoy it.